There's no question the last two and a half years have been brutal for our nation's kids. As if pandemic-induced anxiety and fear wasn't bad enough, most children were forced to stay home for school. That cut off most of their socializing, only increasing anxiety. Learning went down the drain. Depression skyrocketed. So did suicides. Then we had the mask battles. Some experts claim masks have made it much harder for children to learn social cues. So what did doctors do? Prescribe even more drugs to our kids? And in my next guest's latest column, she argues that has been a complete disaster. Back with me, author, New York Post columnist, Carol Markowitz. And I want to ask you, Carol, I'm gonna, my question to you is the first line of your great column in the New York Post. Why does obvious damage to children get ignored for so long? Yeah, I, I really want to know the answer to that question also. My real concern over these last two and a half years, I mean, I have a lot of concerns, but I would say that one of the main things that I keep coming back to is how the media shut down very obviously now write opinions. You know, every article that I read in the New York Times that's like, wow, it turns out kids really lost a lot of learning by not going to school for two years. And it's like, yeah, we knew that. Um, I, I think they're going to get to where, oh, we have speech problems because kids were masked for so long. And we really don't know how these experiments on children will turn out. So we need an honest media to ask the right questions about what we are doing. And we don't have that. Instead, we have a media which shuts down any alternate opinions until we're masking two-year-olds, prescribing a dozen antidepressants to teenagers, or blocking puberty for preteens. And everyone is afraid to speak up lest they have their lives destroyed. People have been fired for speaking up for on things like opening schools. People are afraid, and I really, this is, should be the, the hot topic, the main thing that we talk about. You know, you mentioned the, the studies have now said that people are admitting masks uh, do interfere with social cues and children's learning. Okay, to me, that was patently it's obvious so from obvious. the very beginning. And <laughs> yeah. even if it didn't, I... we have this thing where, oh, we're going to wait for the data come in. Why do we wait for data? Why, don't we, why didn't parents just mm -hmm. stand up and say, no, 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 we are not going to do this to our kids? I feel like people were paralyzed, and they tried to use the data against us when they didn't even have any data. Um, but I think yeah. now... Well, As, with the New yeah. York Times admitting it, do you think this could ever happen again? Mm -hmm. Yes, I totally think this could happen again because we haven't held anybody accountable. Not one person has been held accountable for what they did, for what they got wrong. Anthony Fauci is like on his goodbye tour, like patting himself on the back. I can absolutely see us following the same experts who got everything wrong and politicized the health crisis down the same path. You know, a lot of people say to me, like, look, it was a pandemic. They didn't know what they were doing. You know, they made mistakes. It wasn't just mistakes. Anthony Fauci went on TV and said that we couldn't open schools until Biden's spending plan was passed. I mean, the, the CDC let Randy Weingarten, the head of a teachers union, write policy on when to open schools. These aren't mistakes. This is, this is real bad things that they did to our children, and they're not being held accountable. And until we do hold them accountable, we risk going back down, you know, this path for, like, COVID-2020 or whatever um, the next one hits, I, I just see us go returning to all the same bad people and the same bad policies. New York Times also admitted that teens now are taking antidepressants that perhaps they shouldn't even be taking. A lot of these drugs, they weren't approved for people under the age of 18. And in your story, yeah. you reference, and I think the New York Times references one student who was on about 10 different drugs. And at this point, am I right? Have Ten. these drugs been proven to increase suicides? Oh, yeah. They, they had to put a, a warning label on these drugs to say that these drugs make people suicidal. So that we're giving teens the drugs that are not approved for them with a warning label on it that they, they might increase their suicide risk. I think that so many things that we do, we only do this to children because we just don't, not that we don't care about them, but that we see them as guinea pigs. Like, oh, let's see what happens if we give this drug to these kids. And they're, they don't have the same kind of agency as adults do to say, wait a minute, look at this box on my medicine that says I might kill myself over it. And we, it's so horrific that you know, we do this in the first place, but the fact that if you try to say anything against it, oh, you're against antidepressants, you, you know, you're, you're some quack who doesn't believe in medicine. And that's not true. It's just that we have to face some reality, and that's one example of a place that we just refuse to face it where kids are concerned. Very true. Thanks so much, Carol.